up everyone, it's Ryan here, and today we're back with another Transformers Bumblebee, and I actually saw the movie again today, amazing, loved it again, and when I was enjoying the movie, I was on the lookout for any Easter eggs I missed in my first movie breakdown, but I actually haven't done a video on all the characters I actually saw in the movie, so I saw some new characters, so it's good I'm doing this now, so I'm going to do every character that I might have missed, which you might have missed, I don't know, you guys might have seen all these characters that I might have missed, but there are some obvious ones I already know about. So we're both doing Autobot and Decepticon. So without any further ado, let's get into it, guys. But guys, this will be containing spoilers from scenes and stuff, since these characters are on scenes. So if you have not seen the movie, please click out, because there will be spoilers. But feel free to come back if you would like. Alright guys, we're going to be getting into the Autobots first. Now, a lot of these images you see are actually ones from the trailers, like all of them are from the trailers. So you might have missed them in the trailers and in the movies. So let's get into like what characters you might have missed and who I think they are. So the first Autobot that I spotted was Ratchet in his G1 form. And I was really impressed when I saw him. I knew it right away because of his classic colors, the red and white, clearly meaning that he's an Autobot medic. And I liked how he has those red horns too. Very unique to his G1 design and I'm glad that Travis Knight actually added all this detail to one character even if he had only a little bit of screen time I'm still really impressed. So then we actually get to see three Autobots that I know. RC in her G1 form, which looks amazing. The classic, like, pink and, like, white. Those are classic colors for her. Very well done and very, like, good design. There's also Cliff Jumper, who also has his classic red and the horns. Another really well done detail, because he's known for the horns. And Braun. And I don't know much about Braun, but it seems like he was really well done. I actually looked him up, and it looks like he's exactly the same from the old 1980 shows and movies along with all these other Autobots. Then we also get to see Wheeljack, and Wheeljack looks amazing. Like, I actually know Wheeljack pretty well, and it looks like how he did, like, in, like, the old TV shows. Like, all these Transformers, he has his classic colors of white, red, and green. It seems like he's on the front lines, and I love his classic ninja mask. Then we actually get to see the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime. Now this looks sick. Like his design was really cool. I like the blue helmet and his faceplate that was unique to like the old TV shows and movies is still on. It never came off like in the Michael Bay movies and it moved when like Optimus was talking. Very nice and I also like all the stripes of the white and then just basically like the red blocky Optimus Prime we knew in G1. Now, Bumblebee, of course you have to have a G1 version of Bumblebee in this movie, and he just looks amazing. I loved how Bumblebee, like how he showed his emotions, his origin story in this movie. I love how he actually talked at the beginning of the movie, but then we actually see how it was actually taken out his voice box. And I just loved his design. I loved this character. I loved him and Optimus, but Bumblebee was a real winner. So the final Autobot that I actually saw was actually Ironhide, who in his like G1 form was actually red and black. And I saw an Autobot who had red and black, him right here. And it seems like this could be Ironhide since he's actually one of the fan favorite Autobots. I think the chances are high because Ratchet, Optimus, and Bumblebee have all appeared in this movie. So I don't think the chances are actually very low. So those are all, like, the Autobots who I think were, like, classic G1 that everyone knows. But now we're going to be moving on to the G1 Decepticons that I think everyone knows. So let's get into it. So the first Decepticon that was in his G1 form that I absolutely loved in this movie, that would be Soundwave. Now, Soundwave was amazing. He looked exactly like his G1 form, which Travis Knight was going for, and he looked totally amazing. I loved how Ravage, like, ejected from that little glass window. It was amazing. Ravage was amazing. He was like a little panther, and he had all these colors that even made him look like G1, but Soundwave was a true Decepticon in here, and he was just, like, a really good character to watch. And even though Soundwave got the most screen time, my favorite, even before this movie, was actually Shockwave. He is my favorite Decepticon. I don't think anything will change that. Shockwave is just amazing. I just love him for some reason. I do not know why. And I love his G1 design. So, Travis Knight, great job on adding him in. You actually really made my day when you actually added Shockwave in. And he just looked so good in this movie. Michael Bay's Shockwave was pretty good too. But I love this version of Shockwave. And I don't think he's going to actually be going anywhere anytime soon from my number one spot on the Decepticon list. 
Another Decepticon that was a fan favorite that appeared was Starscream, and like all of these characters, Starscream was well done. I'm not a big Starscream fan, I wasn't a fan of like Michael Bay's like interpretation of Starscream in his universe, but G1 Starscream, really impressive. Like all these characters, if they were brought from G1, like from the old TV shows and into the movies, they would look like this. So Travis Knight, that's a huge compliment and just a great job on Starscream. Even though he didn't say anything, you could clearly tell that this was Starscream, and even though I'm not a big fan, I still like that he was included. So the next Decepticon that was unnamed is actually a Decepticon named Blitzwing. Now, Blitzwing is sort of like a hard subject in this movie since, like, he was being confused to be Starscream or Blitzwing. It seems like the people who were creating the Bumblebee movie, though, decided this was Blitzwing. So he's not purple, probably because of this whole confusion and stuff, but he is Blitzwing. Alright guys, the next Decepticons we spotted were Shatter and Dropkick. Now, we're not entirely sure if they're in their G1 forms. I saw them on Cybertron during the movie, and it seems like they were still pretty close to what they looked like in the movie, so we're not entirely sure, but they were still like the main Decepticons, and it was still actually cool to see them if you're not entirely sure who was who. Shatter is actually the red one, and Dropkick is the blue Decepticon. So yes, they were both really actually interesting characters. They had a lot of detail, and I like how they actually looked really Really different from each other and they were important because they were also triple changers which we haven't seen before. And I know some people like Ravage, so I'm going to add him. So Ravage starts out like a cassette tape in Soundwave until Soundwave gives a command like Ravage Eject. Then he shines when he turns into his panther form, and he did really good. He looks exactly like G1 in this movie, and he was able to take down Optimus Prime. Awesome. And guys, I'm just going to add this group because this seems like also like a main group of the Decepticons that we actually saw in the Bumblebee movie. This would actually be the Seekers who are an elite fighting force for the Decepticons. And they actually consist of a lot of G1 like fighter jets for the Decepticons known as Acid Storm. He is the green transformer. And there's also Thundercracker who is actually supposed to be the blue transformer. And there's also supposed to be Skywarp who is also purple. But yes, the Seekers consist of a lot of classic G1 transformers. So I thought I would actually add them right, in. Guys, that's the end of the video for today. If you actually did enjoy, leave like a like. That would be great. Or subscribe would be even greater because everyone's a superstar. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you later. Have a great day and goodbye.